Ready? Welcome to the Royal Minor Museum of Local History. We're open Saturdays and Sundays from 1 o'clock till 4 o'clock. Come on down and see us. Okay, we're going to start here with a tour. We're going back in time. No cell phones, no computers. You know, very few people had electricity. So I want you guys to think of that. No video games. Okay, we're going to start here with a book collection written by our local author, Charlene Brown. The school has a copy of this, Elizabeth's Golden Land. This is an amazing book about a young girl and her travels in a covered wagon across to Willamina and where she ended up. We even have her original trunk that went on her trip with her in our back room. Okay, now we're going in here. Many people in this area for work logged similar to like they do now. The difference was the trees were huge now the trees may not be as big because there's been so much logging. But with the trees being large and no modern equipment to make it easy, everything had to be done by hand. You know, you look at one of the early chainsaws here, and these are two man because of the large trees and the heaviness. Many times, even as there was transportation improving, many times they still used oxen or cows to, you know, pull horses even to pull things like, you know, the large logs and chains because they were so heavy. Now we step into our military area and you can see many uniforms from the past and some paraphernalia of the military. The big difference is what the materials and the uniforms were made of. Nowadays, they try to make the uniforms lightweight, more comfortable, that work better. Before, things were made out of wool. Imagine having to go out in battle in bad conditions and you've got wool clothes on. Smell bad when they get wet, hot and sweaty when it's hot. If you come down, you may recognize one of your relatives. These were all donated by actual men in the military that live in our area, or lived in our area. You also may see a portable record player. One of the ones that you turn, and you'll see how heavy it was to turn. I'm not gonna turn it on, but I'm just gonna show you. So, if you wanted music, this is what you'd use. And in the military, they actually had this purchased by the men from Army 41 Division and records so that they had something to listen to on their downtime. We have a small display of our local police department and fire department. You may not know, but we actually had a police department here with our own officers. And we had started out as a city fire department and then went to a county fire, not a county, but a fire district, I should say, that was in our area. Now we're back to our tour, going back in time. We're gonna put our travel hats on and we're gonna go back. Many years ago, only people with a lot of money could afford toys like this for their children. You'll see some really nice dolls. Down here at the bottom though, of our display, you may see some more crudely made toys, which most families had. The parents made toys for the kids. The women sold dolls for the kids. Dads did whittling of different toys for the boys. And that's just what they had. Or they ran out in the woods and played. Here's our bedroom set up. You may find this interesting. You know, you're lucky if you had a mattress like this. 
This bed is made out of ropes. Some beds just had wood across them. Sometimes the mattresses were filled with straw. Sometimes they were lucky and they might have cotton or they could have feathers from poultry. The blankets were all handmade. When it was cold, you could heat this up, wrap it in a small cloth and put it down to keep your feet warm. Then we moved up to a more modern foot warmer. Now, you girls that like curling irons, hair dryers, we don't have those back then. What we have was, looks like a curling iron. These came in many sizes. How you used them was no electricity. You put them in your oil lamps, heated them up, put them in your hair. The problem is many times they were a little hot and you burned off part of your hair. Samples of nightwear. Everybody wore night shirts, even the guys and the boys. When they were all, you notice in clothing, everything is hand done. And if you look, you'll see the stitches. They look like they were sewn on a machine. They're so fine and close together, but they weren't. That's what the moms did, or the ladies, actually girls were taught to do in the evenings. They spent their time sewing, crocheting, knitting. If you were lucky, you had books and you could have some reading time by lantern. The boys spent their time either repairing things or whittling with their dads. Then for the upper families, upper class families, they had parlors. They had pianos. Some of you may have never seen this before. This is called an accordion. It pumps back and forth and you push the buttons to get the music out. And the, these families could sit around in the evening, someone could play the piano, they could sing, or they could just enjoy the music. When it was cold, they have a little stove here that they could use. It's an oil stove. Phones did come out early, but once again, unless you were closer in cities, the larger cities, you didn't have access to a phone. You had to get on a horse or get in your little buggy and ride over to somewhere to send a message. This, the phones before, like this one, you ring them up, you pick up the receiver, ring them up, an operator answers and asks, who do you want to talk to? And of course, there aren't that many people, so she just takes and plugs you into that family or that business or person. Okay, now we'll move into one of my favorite spots, the kitchen. Okay, this right here was a luxury item. This is one of the more modern stoves this family had electricity, so they have some electric burners here. But they also have a wood system for backup. So they'd make their fire in here, heat up their oven, heat things up on top, tea kettles, whatever's needed. That was really, really nice. But once again, luxury item that very few people had starting out. Okay, and there are a few other of the early luxury items, a mixer and a pressure cooker. And into the kitchen, kitchen's fascinating. In the kitchen, they didn't have refrigerators. How'd they keep stuff colder from spoiling? They had ice boxes. You open up your ice box, you get ice. Local places would have ice, you'd get ice and put ice in it and big, big chunks of ice, and that would keep things cold for a while, but you had to change and add more ice every so often. You'll see things like an old-fashioned butter churn, a hand. Make sure here that you can use for a variety of things, and in more of the kitchen utensils, which, like I said, are fascinating. Now remember, there wasn't modern plumbing, so, you pumped your water. And of course, that means no hot water unless you heated it on 
your stove or on your fire. Everybody had a fireplace and fire, so they usually had a pot hanging there of hot water for convenience. Now we'll walk over here to some of our businesses. Old Dock. You can see a variety of things. Um, I'm not going to tell you all of them. I'm just going to say that you should come down and look at some of the names of the medicines they had, some of the stories in here of things that they used, antidotes for po poisoning. It's amazing the things they had. Really rough utensils, syringes, really old things. So you might want to look at this. Then we have the store. The store is where you went very little, maybe once a month, you'd go down to your local store and you'd pick things up and they would have fresh meat hanging. You could pick your chickens up. You might, they might have some beef. You never knew exactly what was available, pork, but they would get their meat and usually large, pe it would come in large pieces and they'd take it home and cut it up themselves unless they had an on-site someone that could butcher it up for you in a specific cut that you'd like. Then we had just a variety of things. And depending on what your finances were, you could get some modern spices, you could get coffee, you could get fruits and vegetables that maybe you didn't grow yourself. You could have your coffee ground, however you'd like. Of course, they had their stove in here so that Kita, everybody had a stove or a fireplace to keep warm. Um, we're going to go back to our bedroom for a minute because there's something I want to show you in the bedroom. We didn't have indoor plumbing. So if you needed to go to the bathroom at night, it's cold and a little dangerous outside. So how'd you go to the bathroom? Well, you had a variety. You had a chamber pot, kept it under your bed, opened it up, used it at night, put the lid on. And then every day you cleaned it out, rinsed it, cleaned it out, put it back for the next night. Um, you had your pitcher and water in your little sink here so you could wash up. And for the fortunate, they had a modern indoor chamber pot or maybe one of your first toilets where you could actually sit in a chair and it also then would double as a chair. Same thing though, you have to empty and clean it every day. Okay, we're gonna go through 